As most of you know, I do have a hoverboard. This is actually Michael's, mine is downstairs. But on today's vlog, I want to talk about how to tell if yours is going to catch on fire. The way in which we're going to determine if your hoverboard is likely to catch on fire is by taking it apart. We got to open it up and we got to look at some stuff. I have been digging and researching a lot on this subject because so many people are so concerned that their hoverboard is going to catch on fire. And everyone tells me about it. And what really sparked it was my university banned them on campus, which just irritates me because I've had mine for five months now and no issues with it. And I've already checked mine. Mine is fine, been fine. If you don't want to take yours apart, the main thing you need to worry about is did you spend more than $300? If you spent around $300 or more, you really don't need to worry about it. It's If you spent under $300, you really should take yours apart and make sure that everything is in there that I'm going to go through right now. All right. To start here, we have to take off the cover. Each cover on the back side has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws on each side. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When you take those screws off, make sure you keep them in the correct order so that way you put them back in. There are different screws for different sizes. If you guys can see there, there are different screws for different holes. Once you get it off, you don't have to take this off like I did here. Leave these plugged in. I unplugged them for different because I actually had to fix something on Michael's hoverboard. All right, now let's get into it. First thing you want to do when you open up your hoverboard is look at the color of the circuit boards. The other side will look different. The batteries on the other side, we'll look at that next. All right, you want to look at the color of the circuit boards. There are four different colors that you will find in these hoverboards. You can find green, blue, yellow, or red. Now, when it comes to quality, red is the worst. Yellow is the next best. It's, and then green is your good ones. Blue are the best. These are the cream of the crop ones here. Michaels happens to have blue gyros and a green uh, motherboard. Uh, mine has green gyros. These are the gyros. There's one on the other side. And green... It had a green motherboard. When I replaced the motherboard, I put in a blue one. So, main thing you want to worry about when you open up and look at the circuit boards, if yours is red or yellow, please look into replacing those circuit boards. I will link in the description below where you can buy all the circuit boards for $50 and then replace them yourself. If you don't want to do that, I'll also link below to a hoverboard repair company that is in West Virginia. They are very, very good at what they do. When I fried mine, I contacted them. They walked me through all the steps. Very good. Digital Life, in West, they're in West Virginia. I believe they're in West Virginia. They are very good at what they do. They also have videos on how to replace all these if you don't want to, if you want to try and do it yourself. Now... After we looked at the circuit boards, next thing we want to look at is underneath of the motherboard. Underneath the hoverboard, we have this layer. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's this layer. It's a rubber silicone layer. Here. This is in between the circuit board and the heat sink. If your hoverboard does not have this, which Michaels did not, you want to get this piece right here. I will link in the description below where you can pick up this. This is called the insulator and it insulates the heat sink between the heat sink and the circuit board. There are all kinds of connections on the back of the circuit board. If they come in contact with the heat sink, it can short circuit it and cause a fire. So make sure you have this rubber piece in here. Moving on. 
now we need to move on to the other side of the hoverboard. So I will fast forward me taking all the screws off for you guys. Alright, I unscrewed all the screws. I just left them in the housing. It makes it easier to keep track of them. I'm going to pull it off like so. And I'm going to set it to the side. The, bat the side with the battery is a lot easier to set to the side because there's only one connection. The other one has three connections. So now on this side, we want to look at the battery. When you open up this, you want to make sure that these batteries do not seem swelled in anything. So all you do is just really run your finger over it and look at it. You'll be able to tell if it's swelled at all. Then you also want to check right here on this edge. It's really hard to see, but there's a, a bulge out here. And this right here is the charging controller for all the cells in the battery. You want to make sure it has that charging controller. If it doesn't, more than likely it's a very cheap made battery. Not a good thing for you to have in your device. Me personally, the batteries are not a major thing to worry about. It's more like I said, the circuit boards and like we talked about over there, the insulator piece. Make sure you have those for sure. All the batteries are going to look different. If your battery says LG or Samsung on it, you have a good battery, a really good battery. The Chinese ones, they are fine. Just make sure it has a charging controller. You can take this battery out. There's only four screws holding it in. And you can take the blue shielding off, which I did on mine originally. And the factory stamp will be on this charging controller over here if you want to go into that much detail. Personally, I wouldn't worry about it too much. All right, and that's it. All you do now is put them back on and screw it back together. Michael's hoverboard will, will not catch on fire. Now that we put the insulator piece in. And now he's going to demonstrate how to ride one. Yeah! Wait, what? Wait, what? Alright! Voila! Hoverboard. Fully works. Like I said, guys, the main things you need to worry about when you open up the hoverboard. Make sure you have green or blue circuit boards, not yellow or red. Make sure you have the insulator piece in between the circuit board and the heat sink plate. And if you really want to uh, look into the battery, make sure the battery looks like a battery. Uh, the battery really isn't a thing you really have to worry about too much. Uh, and then overall, guys, you don't want to overcharge these things. If you do overcharge it, just you're fine. And just once or twice is fine. Don't overcharge them a lot. Uh, max, leave it on the, the charger for two hours max, maybe three hours max. Maybe get yourself a timer, set the timer so that way it automatically shuts off the charger every time you put it on there because you don't want to overcharge these things. Uh, that is still an issue. You can cause, if you overcharge, the batteries will swell and eventually get to the point where they might explode or catch on fire. Um, so, as long as you check those things, don't overcharge your hoverboard, you'll be fine. Nothing to worry about. And like I said, um, those parts that you guys will need, if you do have red or yellow 
circuit boards. I am linking the parts on Amazon in the description below. It's $50 for all the circuit boards. I will also be linking you guys to where you can buy the insulator piece and then also going to give you the website for the tech, the hoverboard tech guys that are in West Virginia. If you ever have any problems or anything, contact them, call them up. They'll take care of it. If you don't want to check your hoverboard yourself, you can ship it to them. They'll check it for you, make sure it's all good to go. Make sure that you don't have a fire hazard on your hands. Thank you for fixing this.